We are the three amigos coming at you for a 10 versus 10. And we're talking about a publisher today, which is a new thing for us. Uh, and we chose Tasty Mitchell Games. Tasty Mitchell Games, which is a fun name. It is. Tasty Minstrel is. Games. Just yeah. seems like a, f a renaissance fair in the making. And they're, they're, they're like mascots of <laughs> dragon. It's just confusing yeah. on every way. Yeah, like, it's, it's Dargon the dragon. Dargon? I like that. I did not know <laughs> that it had a name. And a very approachable dragon. Not scary burn your village down like Pete's dragon going to be your friend dragon. Is it like Dargon? Dargon is, cool. it? is it like that? We must say that. It must be Dargon. I think, I think what happened was that they miswrote dragon at one point. <laughs> and, so, and it came back oh, as Dargon yeah. and it just stuck. That's, yeah. I, I'm going to go ahead and say that's exactly what happened. Yeah. Dargon, that, yeah. Dargon the dragon is just like, I don't know, brilliant. It was kind of perfect. Uh, that's amazing. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. we're doing so, TMG games. KC Minstrel Games. Uh, and real quick, I'm Nick. I'm Mike. And I'm Steph. Indeed. Yeah. And we're talking about KC Minstrel today, which is a, uh, a company that uh, oftentimes brings over games mm -hmm. to the U.S. Or re-releases them for a second edition or something yeah. like that. So there's, there's going to be a lot of games that you see that have uh, flown under a different banner or maybe were first uh, published and developed by a different banner that maybe brought over by TNG yeah. to America or wherever. So it's kind of cool times they get a really wide range of games. Really cool, like, deluxe versions. Yeah. All their games are always very great, big, deluxified, pretty. That's they're they're nice really, stuff. really great. Yeah. So that's what we're it's doing super. today. I love them. I love them all. Yeah. They're so good. <laughs> they're, they're pretty yeah. good. They're and that's pretty why good. we chose them as our first kind of publisher list. We figured it'd be kind of cool to see, especially again, a company that has uh, worked with other companies so much to bring games uh, to a wider audience. Yeah. Uh, and I think without yep. further ado, yeah, let's get into uh, the top 10 uh, TMG games, us versus the list created by BGG users. Let's start with Board Game Geeks number 10. <laughs> So the first game from Board Game Geek is ranked 478 overall, and it is Luna. And guess what? That's also our number 10. Oh, my goodness. Because we're required to have a Feld on every list. Every list. Because you, you might see Feld. a few Felds on this list, because Casey Mitchell has He's quite so a few. He's so tall. Yeah, he Seth Feld's so got, got, some, got some ownage on this list. He but does. Uh, Luna is the first one, yeah. He probably shows up more than anybody else. He's a good designer. Just saying. He so is. Steph, yeah. You love Luna. Go ahead. I really do. It is so wonderful. Um, so this is all about planning to try and get points. But every turn you're going to have some number of actions that you're doing. And you want to make sure your guys end up in the right spot for the next turn. And all these different things are moving around every round. So you don't want to be where there's a bad guy because they might, you know, attack you and get some of your stuff or whatever. There's a lot of different things that are happening and you have to mentally be planning like five turns in a ahead to know where you need yeah, to be yeah. at all times. <laughs> yeah, I'm not good at that either. So bad at that. But uh, I, I quite like where it's like you're not playing this turn. You're playing three turns from now. Yeah. This turn, You know, like that whole got to plan and, and really kind of see the matrix in the game and like look around but okay so i need to go here to get to there to go over to there but then this thing's going to come over here like chess right you're playing yeah. 10 moves ahead yeah uh this game seems to do that it's like i think it's just an interesting thing and one that neither of us are great at but i'm i want to be i yeah. want to be good at it. i really want to be so luna might be yeah. our path it's really it's a really cool game and probably a flown under the radar a bit. Um, again, it was originally published by uh, Pegasus Spiel, which then Tasty Mitchell eventually picked up. And I'm very pleased about that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, it's a game that's like ranked in the top 100. It's been around for 10 years. So I mean, it's it's hung in there, yeah. which is cool. So it's a game that maybe isn't the most talked about, but there's definitely fans of it out there, uh, Steph and people in BGG included. Like yeah. it's a game that, that uh, people are intrigued by to this day. So that is uh, everyone's number 10. I guess with that, I'm gonna keep the my hand on the wheel and jump into BGG's number nine. <laughs> so number nine is ranked 460 overall, and it's uh, Belfort. Belfort. I know absolutely nothing about this. <laughs> I know nothing it is about this a worker placement game. Oh, uh, I love it. And Great so game. Game. there's a lot of tough choices. And so what, what's kind of sad about Belfort is that it kind of came in and disappeared. And you can't really get it. You can't really figure out how to play it either. I mean, so it's around. You'll see it around, but it's not common. Um, mm. And so that's probably yeah. why you guys haven't had the chance to play it. I mean, but I think, I think yeah, Nick, you would really, really, really love it. I think you're yeah, really love it because it's it's ranked 
pretty darn high if it's not necessarily that easy to come by. Yeah. Which is good. I mean, you, you have me at worker placement and Belfort. Belfort's yeah, there's a, a lot city. of tough choices, and that and it makes a really good yeah. game. And the board is like a pentagonal shaped. It's pretty interesting. It's what beautiful. Fun? I love that. It's beautiful. <laughs> so it's pretty, okay. pretty to boot. Who knew? Yeah, uh, Belfort's I think it's worth nine. checking out. Yeah, yeah. Oh, that, absolutely. You know, if you can find it, go play it. Uh, and it is out there some places. I guess we just gotta dig, dig a little deep. Maybe TMG will bring it back again uh, so we can have it fresh in, in this year. But uh, it's number nine for Board Game Geek. Let's go ahead and jump into our number nine. Our number nine, what a good year, 1961. I don't know, I wasn't born, <laughs> but it is Flip City. <laughs> Flip City. Flip, Flip City. City. Again, this yeah. was a game that they took, uh, they brought over. Uh, it was a Japanese game, I believe, or Chinese yeah, I game. So. And so they, they incorporated it into a small box game for us. It's a card game. You are building up your cards and a tableau like sequence. Yeah. And it, you're flipping them. They're all like, you can like upgrade them, right? They flip, yeah. Yeah, that's the whole point is to kind of get yourself flipped and upgraded uh, and get there first. And I like it mostly because it's super um, compact. It's like, very I mean, small. It's, it's the know, box anyway. I yeah, mean, it can, yeah. It can kind of get in front of you a little bit. But I mean, like Nick and I will play this like on planes. Yeah, and we like, play it on planes a lot. We bought this literally at a con. We were, I think, at the Cool Stuff booth. Uh, we were. And getting we were the cool stuff booth, yeah. I, whatever. I don't know. And it was just sitting there. It's, it's an Impulse buy, right? Small, so sitting there by the register, I was like, it was right next to the twins. Yeah, that's TNG's down. card, we'll get it, you know? Yeah. And then I was like, oh, I like this a lot, you know? Yeah, <laughs> it's, like, yeah it's really fun. Again, maybe. it's just, you know, you're, you're pushing your luck, um, and then and then yeah. you're upgrading cards. It's got a lot of like little mechanics that we like in a small yeah. package. It's pretty easy to explain uh, to like new people, but at the same time, there's a lot of decisions in it as well. And so it's a good game to get kind of people like, oh, okay, I can understand this, but yeah. this has actually got a lot going on. Yeah. And and again, it's a, a quick. Here's the thing: if your game comes in a small package. We're way more likely to buy it and try it because if we're always looking for games that we can travel with because we travel a lot, and we're like, what games can we play on a plane? What games can we throw in a back pocket when we're going what out? Can I to take them? with me? Yeah, it's like it's easy. And Flip Cities is honestly one of the games I most commonly bring when I do like I have this side job that I do sometimes, and I always bring at least one or two small mm -hmm. games, and I almost always bring bring Flip Cities. Yeah, almost always, so and it's it a great little game. Quick, yeah. Uh, and yeah. that's why it's our number, number nine, nine, folks. Nine. Number nine. Uh, we're going to go ahead and jump into Board Game Geeks number eight. Nailed it. Number eight from Board Game Geek comes in at 425 overall, and it's another Feld. Feld's up in here. It's awesome. Oh, he's got a lot of games yeah. here. <laughs> Yeah, a lot of games. This is just number it's two on the list. Felt heavy <laughs> list. Uh, Aquasphere. So, Steph, what do you know about Aquasphere? Oh, my I'm goodness. Not, it is. I don't know. We don't play it. We don't. I, I, I always heard good things. Octopuses really are flying at it. you at all angles. I know. <laughs> That's why I want to try it. <laughs> no, it. It's cool. I mean, it's, it's like an area control, but you're like manipulating different sections of the board to get different cards and, and do different things depending on where you are. And you're trying to get your subs out there. <laughs> There's a lot of different things going on, um, so you want to be planning. Again, this is another planning game where you're thinking 10 steps Shocker. ahead. If I'm over here, then I should want to be over here and that, these things. So um, it's it's definitely more in depth. It's not one that you can just like jump into. You really need to figure out all yeah. the different mechanics that are happening. Um, it, it's intricate, um, and I liked it. I like it. So I mean, it's one that I would definitely want to play again. Sweet. Cool. I like the I like the term intricate. Intricate. Yeah. <laughs> and that's like, a lot know. of. A lot of games you can say are like, it, it just, like the inner it's closely <laughs> weaved, you know? Yeah. yeah. Uh, and that is why it's a Board Game Geek's number eight, is it? Are we on yes. number eight? Yes. <laughs> and that's why uh, it's Board Game Geek's number eight overall. So let's go ahead and jump into our number eight. First try. <laughs> Our number eight is ranked 549 overall. And guess what? It's another Feld title. <laughs> It is oh, wow. the Oracle of Delphi. Yeah. Like I said, Feld's up and down this list. He is up and down this list. He All really Felds. is. <laughs> and that makes me really happy because I'm a big fan. <laughs> Indeed. And this is one of the few pick up and deliver games that you like, right? I know. I really am not a huge fan of pick up and deliver. This is one of like the one that I like. <laughs> Yeah. Because there's yeah. more to one it than just one. pick up and deliver. You are rolling dice and placing these dice on their colors, and you are using these colors to do different actions with 
depending on if you roll a red, maybe you move your boat to a red space, or if you you know move, roll a yellow, you move to the yellow space. But it all depends on where you land, because if I use the yellow die to go there, I can use the red die to pick up something red. So it's like you're trying to make it all work, and there's a big like production that you're doing, and you're trying to get like you're trying not to get skulls because skulls will make you lose turns, uh, but you want to awesome. increase the god track so you can get cool bonuses. I mean, so there's like lots to think about. And everybody's racing to do all the same things. So you yeah. want to get to that red space before they do, and you want to get to that like statue over there before they do. So all these different things, and it's just like a free for all, like crazy, and you're at the mercy of your dice. And <laughs> there's, there's ways to manipulate that. your dice, but it's, it's, uh, it's Sounds interesting. wild. It's, it's really cool. And the board is yeah. just a, a mess because you throw out these tiles and every game is going to be totally different depending on that board setup. So. And that's yeah. awesome. Yeah, because there's tons of variability. Now, you've talked about that a lot with like the, the variability is just like through the roof depending uh, yeah. on like how stuff sets up and stuff, which is always, again, if there's nothing else you're doing in your board game if you're designing one. Add variability. Make it so that <laughs> make it like, replayable. <laughs> yeah, make it replayable. You know, it's like that's really the best thing you can do. Yeah, and add goats. Goats. <laughs> goats, goats make every game great. Goats. Every game. Goats are like goats. an instant top ten game. Guy like project. Goats. Goats. <laughs> goats. Gaia goats. Guy. Uh, Guy goats. Little anyway. like face like goat. <laughs> Gaia goats. Oh, we're way off the rails. Oh my anyway, goodness. That is why uh, the the Oracle of Delphi goats or not is our number eight. <laughs> And uh, we're gonna go ahead and jump into Board Game Geeks number seven. So our number, or excuse me, Board Game Geeks number seven is ranked 413 overall, and it is Coliseum. Ooh. I know, this is People have been, been I th if I remember correctly, uh, fighting for this to get a reprint for a long time. Yeah. Um, yeah. I think, didn't it recently come back? Yeah, relatively, I think within the last few years. Yeah. Perhaps and Tasty so, Mitchell brought it back. Yeah. <laughs> Because yeah. people have been, for years, been like, oh, it's out of print, it's out of print, it's out of print, it's out of print. Yeah. And then finally it came back. And so, I, I have, you, have you played it, Steph? We haven't played oh, it. Yeah. Those are great things about Seems it, Seems cool. Though. Yeah, it's it, it's been a while now. But I, I believe, like, you're auctioning and you're trying to get these different, like, tiles that will help increase your, like, set collection so you can do different performances out there. And it's it's, it's really interesting the way that, like, the board works because you're wa walking around and... Oh, I just can't really remember totally, but there, there's like, you're, if you're behind, then this happens, and if you're in front, yeah. then this happens. So all these different things are happening. Um, but I remember for like the auction part, you're trying to like set collection. Yeah, and put on different. So I, I it's yeah. been, it's a big game. You need like three players, so it doesn't come to the table that frequently. I mean, it's been like maybe three That's years hard, since I you know. played it. So, but I remember really enjoying it, and it's still on my shelf. So I need to get that back down. <laughs> there you go. Is it the TMG shelf? version? Yes. Okay, cool. Yeah. And it has well, all those so, deluxified bits and the oh, coins sure. and all the awesomeness. And it's, I have no doubt. It's yeah, awesome. I do love that about TMG, just bringing it, bringing it fancy when they bring it back. Yeah, they nice. sure do. Yeah. Real nice. Uh, and I mean, yeah, Coliseum's 413 overall, uh, number seven on the top 10 for TMG. So they did did good to bring that one back. Yeah, People were, were clearly asking for it. Uh, and it's kind of probably, I'm assuming, in the last couple of years, uh, reboosted those numbers in a game that's originally from 2007. So it's yeah. been around. I mean, it's, yeah, that's 13 years ago. I mean, it's yeah. not new. For Super a game. cool. And that's why it's uh, Board Game Geeks number seven. But let's go ahead and jump into our number seven. Our number seven coming in at 89.58. So this is pretty low, but it's new. It's called Rolled West, a new roll that and write. Yeah. I think this it is, is the new. lowest ranked game we've ever put on a list of ours. <laughs> no, that's not true. <laughs> Steph's had some like the I've had classes. some pretty low ones. <laughs> Steph's had some low ones. And the 2000, this is 9,000. This is 89. pretty low. All oh, right. I was thinking 800. Yeah, no, this is almost no, no, 10,000. No, no. Oh, no, well, this, this is, is probably the lowest game. one. Yes. <laughs> it is brand new. It is Steph. pretty darn new. Yeah, time. It's a yeah you gotta give it time. Let like people play it. It's a little roll and write. I guess the sequel, at least in terms of theme, to Rolled, not Rolled, but Gold, Gold West. West. This is Rolled West. This which is Gold is, West, which is like the Rolled right version of Gold West. We've played Gold West, liked it just fine. It was, I thought it was okay. Um, and then, but any kind of Roll and Write, we're always willing to try, essentially. Mm -hmm. And we tried this one, and I actually really, really like it. You're essentially rolling out dice that are gonna give you silver, copper, or gold, and then you're and mark, wood. Yeah. yeah, or wood, sorry. And then you're marking off different spots on your little, your little board and you're sometimes are like camping, sometimes you're sending your wagon up to like deliver things. You can like 
uh, use your goods to mark off different buildings that'll give you like special scoring opportunities and like that. Mm -hmm. And it's a really good little roll and write that again is very, very quick and uh, we like it a lot. Yeah, the main thing I like about it is that uh, it feels a little more interactive because if I take a certain building from Boomtown, yeah. everyone else loses the ability to get that building. Cross it you off. can't get yeah. it. If I take a certain contract, Nick can't then yeah. get that contract. So it's a bit of a race to get mm -hmm. these things done. Uh, if you get further down the silver track, you get the higher score and everyone else can only get the lower score. Yes. So it feels like you're you're kind of trying to check in with what other people are doing the whole game, which is cool. While it still maintains, it's, very, it's a very quick and yeah. fairly easy uh, And you also right. get resources on other people's turns. You mm -hmm. can choose you get, a resource. So you, you also are, stuff away. it's not a long game by any stretch of imagination, but you are at least interested in what other people are getting to be like, oh, do I... Oh, you know, I need a copper this round. I'm a kid of copper. And so that's mm -hmm. really, really nice as well. Now, Steph, have you played World West? Oh, I have. And I actually think it does a pretty great job um, giving me that Gold West feeling. For yeah. I like Gold West more. However, for a small okay. package that can just come with me wherever I go, it's it's really nice. So it, I definitely get that feeling of Gold West, which yeah. not all yeah, Roll and Rights can accomplish that. No, no, no. Yeah, not it feels all. like a really good implementation of its of its uh, older sibling. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, and while being very compact, kind of like Flip City is the same thing. Like we can play Roll West on planes. And so I, that's it becomes an ever more, as we travel more, an ever more important thing is like, we can't bring Dinosaur Island everywhere. It weighs sure 14 can. pounds. Uh, but I can bring Rolled West. Although we did play Viticulture with Tuscany on a plane once. Get after so, it. <laughs> reach for the stars, people. You can achieve greatness. You, you might, can do so much. You Anything might lose is some bits possible. Floor, but it's fine. Anything, Anything is, possible. is possible. Indeed. Uh, and it's possible for uh, Rolled West to be on number seven. So let's go ahead and jump into Board Game Geeks, Geeks number six. Board Game Geeks number six is ranked 321 overall. It is Almond Ray. Indeed. Now, Again, a lot of these games we haven't played, um, I've, but I've always heard good things about yeah. them. You haven't so you played play it because it's it's an old classic. Yeah. <laughs> that TNG brought back and renewed yeah. it. Yeah. Which again, I like a lot of these games. Are you need to play these old classics. Now, uh, another problem with, w that you guys might have is that it, it requires three or more players, right? And it's That's probably better with, with more. Um, so. You know, I know you guys play a lot of two-player games, as do I, so it doesn't hit the table. It wouldn't hit the table as frequently. Um, this might have to be like a convention game. Yeah, totally. Yeah. You know, someone can show us and it, it, we play it at the proper player count. Yeah. It's more bidding uh, for area control. You're trying to, like, take over these different regions and, and collect the... and build up your pyramids, but there's different goals you're trying to do, So, but it's, it's mostly, like, a bidding game, and money is super tight, as you would expect. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yeah, it's this kind of game. And that's awesome. Yeah, I've always heard really, really good things. And again, Taste of Minstrel, this is what they do. They bring back a lot, especially these games that like, people have been calling for for a while. Yeah, which is why, cool. like, on social media, on Borg and Geek, like, if there's a game that's out of print, let it be known that you, people want this back because yeah. if... There's companies out there looking. Yeah, and if there's enough people saying, like, bring it back, bring it back, bring it back... People will bring it back. Rococo is coming back right now because people for years yeah. have been like, bring Rococo back. Bring it. It's so like, good. <laughs> you know, same with Coliseum. Bring it back. Bring it back. And then eventually someone will go, all right, we'll do it. And they'll yeah. do it. You know, so it's like if there's any kind of thing on Board and Geek, on Twitter, on Instagram, wherever, it's like let people, let publishers know what you want. Like they yeah. want to take their cues from you if they can, you know. Yeah. Absolutely. Uh, and it's cool to see, you know, a couple games in this list that are on the older side. A lot of them actually are on the older yeah. side yeah. Uh, coming back. And Amon Ray is just number six on the list of Board Game Geek. So let's go ahead and jump into our number six. Our number six is 963 and one of my favorite fells as well. <laughs> so many fells. Uh, Rialto. Um, yeah. There, yeah, I, I, I admit I'm a Feld fan. <laughs> All a right. Feld head. One of those Feld heads. <laughs> yeah. Feld heads, There's so many that I'm all love. I'm like, oh, yeah, that's my favorite. No, that's my favorite. This is my favorite. <laughs> There's so many that are great. Yeah. Um, well, so, a very prolific designer, which it's like when you have a ton of games, hurt, you know, know, it's like, I, I get it, you know? Yeah. Um, so Rialto is a, a set. It's a weird drafting game. So there's going to be like cards that are displayed out there. And the, the person who goes first will pick the cards that they have for their hand. You'll get two random ones and you're discard down. But what these cards do are giving you control over the actions that you're taking for the round. So there's like an area control majority of the different sections of 
Rialto. And there's other things you can do like collect money or like gain a building or all these different things. So you are increasing your production, but you also want to gain majority because it's a area control type game, but you're never coming back to the same area. There's six rounds, there's six regions. You get six chances to claim like your status in all these regions, right? And so you really want to focus on a like one thing or something else. I've seen multiple strategies win, so it's it's possible to like avoid one thing and do solely something else or vice versa. It's so there's a lot of clever like card play, if you will. <laughs> I love it. Awesome. I love yeah. it. They'll be playing we with stuff. We have like a Feld month where we all just sit Ooh. in the cabin and, and play Feld. And play Feld. Yeah. I would be there. That's just gotta happen. Pretty good. Yeah, that'd probably, probably be a huge con. Everybody yeah, would come. Yeah. Feldcon. <laughs> Feldcon. Everyone gets like Stefan Feld masks. I wonder if Stefan Feld cool. would show up. That would be cool. Probably. <laughs> just walks in super tall, just like hello. Just with a crown. <laughs> Welcome, my loyal subject. Thank you, you are here. Thank you. That'd be pretty awesome. Uh, <laughs> anyway, that is uh, our number six. So let's go ahead and jump into board game geeks number five. Number five from Board Game Geek is ranked 314 overall, and it is Gugong. Gugong, Gugong. TMG uh, has, has, has had his hands on it, but I don't know nothing about this game. I actually, oh. I played, have you played this one, Steph? Oh, yeah, you played, oh, I actually yeah. have played this one, yeah. Yeah, I, I was, was going to say, it's a worker placement, and you yeah. can play it. Right, <laughs> I know. Yeah, it's it's interesting. I, I, I'm constantly going, I've only played it once, to be fair, and but I did, I did enjoy it, mm -hmm. but I don't know if, I, you said it was mean, right? Yes, and I don't I don't know. It's just for some... I was really, really excited to try it because I loved the look of it. I liked the theme. I liked everything I heard about it. And then I played it, and I, I was... Maybe I was hyping up too much in my head, but I was uh, hmm. kind of underwhelmed, I guess. Uh, okay. I'm not entirely sure. I do want to play it again, though. And I have played it, and I did enjoy it. But, Steph, how much do you like this game? you like this game I, I, I'm pretty much where you are. Okay. I, so I, I enjoyed it. I'm going to play it again. I want to play it again. Uh I think I've only played it the one time as well, and it kind of was. I was since it was so hyped, I, was, I guess I was expecting a little yeah, bit more. I, but I, yeah. I like what it's doing with the like the, the track where you move your guy up the stairs, and and I mm -hmm. like the the jade and the different like the delivery options you could do with the little horse guy. Uh, but for the most part, I'm like, okay, what what's new and exciting? I'm not sure. Yeah. It's just it's a solid game. Yeah, right on. totally. And that's kind of what it is. Like, this is a solid game. It doesn't do anything new. It looks good, you know, as sure. all TMG games do, which is great and stuff like that. But it's like, it just, it felt kind of like, okay, sure. And that yeah. was kind of where I was at. You know, it seems like that's kind of where you were at. And that's staff. what I love about it is that, like, board games are going to appeal to certain people and not others. And it's all valid. You know, it's number five out of the TMGs. And it's, it was spoilers, it's not on, on my list, you know. Yeah. Uh, and But it seems like maybe the jury's still out on it. Like, yeah. I, I need to play it for one, and then you maybe need to play it a second I wanna try, time. I want to get a try feel because there's definitely some stuff that's there. It's a solid game, but maybe it's not your game. Yeah, totally. You know, that's totally fine. Well, I love that. I love that. So, uh, Google is number five for Board Game Geek, but we have a number five that's coming right now. A newer title, uh, number seven thirty-two, called Genties. Now, this was originally Spielworks, yeah. and. Um, they picked it up recently and deluxified it, and that was it absolutely is. gorgeous. Um, they have like inlay boards and like cool little minis and coins, all this stuff. So, you know, I mean, it's beautiful. It's a light civ building game where you are actively trying to get your people to meet in the middle, get more population, to get your buildings on the board. Um, there, there's different ways about going like doing these things and everything costs time. So you're only yes. getting like yeah. three to four actions in a round and the rounds go fast and and then the game's over. You're like, ah! Yeah, it, yeah. it goes by... How you use that time is this time, so crucial. And it's tough because it's like so many of the actions, like you're getting these little tiles that again take up your time and stuff. But it's like if you get to an action quicker, a lot of times the the first few tiles will take up less time. But yeah. it means you have to go there first, which means someone else is going to go to another spot and take the the ones that don't cost as much. And time. you kind of need to do it all. And you kind of need to do it all. And it's just like and you're going up these these different uh, like uh, Steph said, the population tracks are super interesting because you have like artisans and you have like military people and you have like politicians, and they go up these tracks and they're but there's like each track has 
like one type of people and the other type of people on each side. There's three of them, and they can't ever cross each other. Yeah. So if like you have a politician and military people on the same one, once they meet, if the politicians need to move up, it's going to push the military back. Yeah, so you can have like four politicians, but then only two. So you're two constantly in the moving your population around yeah. to get these different cards and different things that you, you need to get requirements for cards. Yeah, and, and it's yeah. really, really fascinating. And it's it's interesting. It's a gorgeous game, but it's got like stick figure art, <laughs> but it works. Yeah. Yeah. I, I look. That sounds bad, but it it's what? not. It's just like it's almost almost. Uh, I always think of almost kind of like hieroglyphic. Yeah, it's, it's it's really what it is. But it's just it's just like it's a really gorgeous game, and it's just I I can't think of any game that feels quite like this game. Yeah, it'll, you know, it'll and it's just really fun. Yeah, yeah I mean, give you a lot to think on. You really want to do it all. I really want to get all these cards that give yes. me cool bonuses, but I really want to get up my population so I can get these cards, but I also want to get my buildings that give me income, and oh my yes. gosh, just, I want to yeah. do it all. Yeah, you get them you... first, you can get these bonuses yeah. for being the first one to do it. Just... Yeah, and we don't <sighs> buy very many games like on a whim, but this one was. We got it on a whim at a convention, mostly just because we were at the TMG booth, and we were kind of like, I like Tasty Mitchell games. Uh, I've heard good things about hand taste. We'll get that. And it yeah. just but super kind of we did blind. <laughs> like, oh, one of our friends has it, and he likes it, and we like a lot of similar games. So I was like, we'll probably like it. But, like, we don't do that very often, and we ended up yeah. getting it and really, really enjoying it. That's yeah. good. That was a good purchase, then. Yeah, it worked we out. It worked out. Good. We done real TMG's good. TMG's more of a safe bet for us, you know, as yeah. a publisher. So it's like, yeah, right, we'll probably like it. They're bringing back these games and stuff and, and doing their own, and so it's like, I feel like they did their homework, usually, yeah. if they're bringing a game that's from another company, like it has to have had some success over wherever it's from mm -hmm. to you know so it's like almost yeah. if you're it's really safer game, betting yeah. on that yeah really uh, good game try it out it's yeah. very fun and hentes or gentes is our number five so let's go ahead and jump into board game geeks number four board game geeks number four is ranked 273 and it's an Uwe Rosenberg game that I, I can't remember hearing about but it's at the gates of yeah. Loyang it's called it was, it's a Oufrans. It's an Oufrans. It's one of the yeah. Oufrans games. Oufrans. Uwe Rosberg, yeah. Clemens Franz. <laughs> this is obviously quite well liked, but I don't know anything about it at the Gates of Loyang personally, yeah. but I guess the people at BGG do. Yeah, yeah I mean, do. I played it a few times and it was years and years ago, but I remember like being, it, it was pretty brutal. You're playing these cards and activating these cards to collect like resources and stuff, but you're trying to ultimately move up like a stone track to get to the end before the other person. So it's, it's kind of a race game. Uh, so okay. what's really brutal, I mean, some of the cards are brutal. Um, if they, if you see your opponents are getting pretty far up and you're still far back, it's like, well, there's no chance. Like, so that's kind of for me where it's like, I never felt like I could catch up. There's no real good catch yeah. up mechanic. So it's rough. Okay. It, it was a rough play. Um, so I don't remember it all that well. And I should probably arguably give it another chance because it is ranked yeah. so high. Um, and so it has 2009, like, it's ancient. You can leave it in the past. <laughs> oh gosh. We haven't played board games back yeah, then. Man. No one was playing board games back then, man. Uh, and at the Gates of Loyang is, I, mean, I guess that's how many people played it. It's number four overall. Something overall. Like board Game Geek uh, for uh, TMG, anyway, 273 overall. So let's go ahead and jump into our number four games that we actually know. Our number four is ranked... 4,335 overall, and it's... Um, it's climbing. It's, it's, it's getting it's climbing. up there. Um, what is... Oh, okay, okay, I have, like, the West game? Okay, Old West Empresario. I, I, it's like, there you I, go, yeah. I, it's really hard to remember how to say that. I'm like, I am pursuing it. <laughs> it's the game <laughs> where you're trying to be an Old West Empresario. Yeah, exactly, right. that one. <laughs> and I know the mechanics much better than I know the name. So. <laughs> <laughs> That's all that matters. If you know how to play it, who cares what it's called? Right? It can be called More Flap the Game, and it's fine. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so there's going to be these tiles up for uh, drafting. And you'll have some dice that you're rolling, and you get to, like, if I roll a four, I can take a tile from the four, or I can activate all my fours uh, in my tableau. It's a city building game. You're trying to get these tiles to your city so you can get big, like, combos and make a, all these different connections on your city. So, like, the bar will, like, you know, whatever the, the patrons that live nearby that will come and feed the bar. So you'll get more points for that or something. And you want all these connections. Uh, so you're trying to draft the tiles that you want, but other people are looking at them too. And you're going to get these different points depending on how your tiles are placed and what you can activate in the rounds. With I these love types. that. Any type of like city building where yeah. adjacency matters and each little 
building. You know, it's like why we like things like Suburbia and stuff. It, you know, they give you yeah. like, little boosts and stuff. It's so and this, fun this, this game is right up your alley, guys. I do think you yeah. would enjoy it's, it. It's, um, it's so. a very satisfying. Yeah. It's only game. ranked in the four thousands because it is fairly new. It's fairly yeah. new. I'm it's, sure it's many people haven't heard about it so much, but I, I enjoyed it quite a bit when I played it. So. That's awesome. awesome. All right, that's why it's our number four, folks. We're moving on into the top threes. Now we're going to start with Board Game Geeks number three. And uh, number three uh, from Board Game Geek is ranked 139 overall. It's been around for a bit and been passed around a bit. It is Village. That's it's a right. worker placement Ooh. game where... By the brands. By the brands, you're playing like a family of workers. Yeah. And, and your family is going to get old and... Not the best name for a board game. Village. Village. Well, there's just so many. There's other cool. things. There's like village, villages at the village. Like, <laughs> it's just like, so you're like, which one is this? This is village. Uh, <laughs> this is a worker placement game where you play like a family of workers yeah. and like you will go through time and you your, your workers are numbered and your oldest workers are going to perish. They're going to yeah. die. Yeah, they're just going to so die. You go put die. them in the graveyard they, they, over they there. They lived a great full life. And based on, uh, it's cool because you can put them into buildings and kind of have them work down uh, different buildings. And if they die in this building, A, that's sad for the janitor who had to find them. But they like, it's basically like they committed their life uh, to, to this type of work, to the church or something. And that might Blue cheese, put them into it. like the, the town journal and stuff. There's like the town, you hope to make it, <laughs> it's like the whole, the highest aspiration of the game is to make it to the town journal. <laughs> or you can be like left in an unmarked grave. So it's like this whole interesting take on worker placement. Um, and that's not the only thing that happens is that people are dying. But I think it's kind of cool. It's most of it. Where it kind of tells the story of your family. Yeah, totally. So, uh, I think that's maybe why it's resonated. Steph, have you played Village, and do you agree? Uh, I, it, I agree. Um, I, I like it. I played it long ago, and the game took forever, so I haven't come back to it, revisit it. But I hear that the expansions make it much better, so I definitely want to check that out with like the different expansions that have been added since. Yeah, yeah we've right played the expansions. We really want to try them, though. We actually, one of our friends uh, lent it to right us. We actually have the expansions over there. We just need to read them. I see you in and port. We need to try the <laughs> port and the other one. And the other one. I can't see, so I don't remember the name of it. Yeah, it's fine. Point is, Village has gotten some love over the years. Yeah. Uh, and it's number three uh, for the users of Board Game Geek. So let's go ahead and jump into our number three. Our number three is ranked 926 overall. It's Chimera Station with these little oh. aliens that you get to build up. <laughs> it's, it's a worker so builder game. It's a worker builder builder game it's it is a worker builder game <laughs> it's so, so much fun it's such a weird game it's yeah, so it's weird weird. <laughs> it is very weird <laughs> i yeah. love it so objectively much. strange it's so weird. go watch we didn't actually didn't in focus here on bg about it. if you want to kind of get an overview of the game it's really really fun but yeah the base of the game the, it, it is uh you are building your workers you have your own little workers but yeah. they're these plastic little monster alien dudes but they and actually pop grow apart. and shrink yeah yeah and you can add different genetic components to them so you can give them like claw arms or you can give them like tentacle arms or leaf arms or like um, a big brain or like a big old brain on them and essentially you can put these components on them each each little um worker can have two components they can be different components or the same components mm -hmm. and the components give you different things like tentacle arms when you go to a spot on the board it's a worker placement game you'll always grab more resource because you're mm -hmm. just like, yeah, sucky like that. hands. Whereas if you have leaf arms, you just eat yourself, and so you don't have to you feed, your, feed people. your workers. And like crab arms allow you to like kick people off a spot, yeah. um, and it's like because you're ultimately building out a, a space station. Yeah, and, but and you're all you, building it together. You're all building it together, so it be benefits you to uh, build parts of the station first to make use of those spaces. You might need, need kind of like these little mean bully folks to push people off. Uh, and so it's just kind of cool how you can kind of customize your little workers for whatever you might need around Yeah, around. and it's like, it comes across as like, when you first see it, you're like, oh, that's kind of a weird gimmick, but it's like, like the, building your workers is like an integral part of the game. And yeah. it's like super, super cool and interesting and fun. And again, it's TMG, so it looks great. And yeah. I, I could, I, every time I play this game, I like it more and more and more. So, Steph, do you like Chimera Station? <laughs> I'm going to talk about it forever, so. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it, it's pretty cool. I... I played a few times. I liked it better with the fewer player count because there's a lot more chaos with more players. Um, yeah. Yeah. Uh, so, but I also like that there's so many buildings, so many different things that you can get um, that changes up from game to game. So, um, I enjoyed it. Yeah. Yeah, it's good stuff. That's it's cool. Just so good. 
Yeah, ah. it's fun. It's just an interesting, different thing with those worker builders. You know, it's it's worth trying, if nothing else, to, to be able to play with all the bits and stuff. Yeah. So uh, that is... It's our number three. Our number three. Let's go ahead and jump into Board Game Geeks number two. <laughs> Folks, I'm not going to lie to you. We got, we got a, a double crossover here. Our number two and your number two, we're like this, synergistic, we're all together. Like number two for everybody officially is ranked 89 overall. It is Yokohama. Good game. Oh, Another love game it. the TMGs we got it's is just super game. deluxified, nice. This Ooh, game nice. is so intimidating to look at, though. It is. Yeah. Like, I put off playing this game a, for a long time because like, I was just like, there's things. so many tiles. And, and of course, I didn't know anything about the game, but I was like, I'm cool. I'm gonna play something else. I'm gonna go play something yeah. else. So just like it, it's it's <laughs> very times, intimidating, but it is times. fun. At our game nights, it was like people were playing it. I was just like, I can't even begin to think about that. <laughs> uh, so Steph, why don't you take us through Yokohama a little bit? Oh man! So in this game, you are placing different little meeples on the board, and eventually you will activate a space with your big guy, your president, that moves around to where your little like meeples are, and depending on how many how many wood pieces you have there, the little guys, your big guy, maybe some houses that you've put there, since you'll get some sort of strength. And depending on your strength, you'll get a better or worse, like income of money or income of tea or different action that you're doing. So you're gonna, you wanna have more strength up to five and you'll get like cool, like a cool option to build a building if you have strength four or five. And so that building, like I said, if you have a building there, you'll get automatically one strength next time you go to this place. So you're trying to build up your engine using these different guys and your president going around to like do these different actions. And you're using these resources and cards that you get to build up and make different things happen. There are different goals you're trying to do and you're trying to get majorities on different boards like the church or the export and all these different things you have and there's so much to think about and it's wonderful but it's not as intimidating once you're playing no, it's it. not so yeah, that's what's it's, great yeah it's just a lot with those tiles that get placed out and one thing i think is really interesting is how you know however you arrange those tiles can can really affect things because you have to kind of move from tile to yeah. tile and make like a path essentially yeah, you can't just teleport around so yeah. yeah so like depending on where things are you know you might need to go way over here to get these certain resources and way over here to to put this worker you know, so like to kind of get like a uh, an area majority or mm -hmm. whatever you know it's um that was one thing that was really fascinating when we got down to it the spaces themselves are not very complicated no, they're no. like okay you know this is what they do but when i just first saw there was just stuff everywhere yeah. i was like oh, i don't know man <laughs> but it's a really fun game i really want to play again yeah yeah, uh, did really like it a lot. Yeah. And then, is the two-player version out yet, Steph? Have you played that? I have not. Oh my goodness, I can't wait. <laughs> yeah, we yes. we got this close to back because we've almost picked, we've almost pulled the trigger and gotten Yokohama a bunch of times. Mm -hmm. But like one of our good friends has it, and so it was kind of like, ah, do we yeah. need it? And then we saw the Yokohama duel, and we were just like, there you go, like yeah. a two-player version of a game that we're interested in. I imagine we're going to be picking it up once yeah. it once it hits stores. Uh, yeah. And, and for what I heard is that I mean Yokohama, we played like a three or four-player game of it, but they, yeah. I heard that does play well at two players. It does. Yeah. Own, it really does. So. But I, anytime there's a two-player specific version of something, I get very intrigued because yes. I'm like, okay, they must have really thought of like why two-player. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, you so get I'm, intrigued I've, and I get suspicious. <laughs> <laughs> that's fair that's fair that's fair i think nick and i in general are, are bigger fans of two-player specific games yeah um but i just i just love the you know the creativity that is and it's not a guarantee it'll be good but i always yeah. like i we'll feel see. like the chances are it could be good so yeah. we'll see but uh, yokohama is everyone's number two regardless of what player can they play right. it at uh so it only leaves the number ones I'm sure number no one no one no ever guessed any no one's ever seen another double crossover coming up next not gonna <laughs> happen right now. Yes, that's happening. back to back double cross <laughs> it's happening. It's happening. So number one, like we just said, uh, is going to happen, folks. Um, is Orleo just one of the best games ever? Oh, Orleo. Orleo. Okay, Orleo. here's the thing. <laughs> It's everyone's number one. We it's will everyone's. eventually stop talking about Orleo on these on these lists. I'm not but sure. But that we day will. is not today because <laughs> it, it's as much your fault as it is ours. All right, we, we always put it so on lists. Everybody, you and always us. put it on lists. It's so good. Orleans is great. Oh, it's annoying. <laughs> so Orleans a bag builder where you pull out these followers and you're gaining followers throughout the game and kind of pulling them out. 
uh, to then activate action spaces. And there's a whole bunch of stuff you can do. You can uh, kind of cruise around France and, and put out buildings and stuff and, and collect resources along the way. Mm -hmm. uh, you can go up different tracks uh, to gain various types of perks and points, get these citizen tiles. And, and that's just in the normal game. And then all of us agree that Orleans Invasion turns that game and makes it a cooperative experience where now you're trying to kind of build up defenses on a wall, store resources sort of for winter, mm -hmm. gain these citizen tiles and stuff, and it makes it a fun, cooperative, uh, very difficult yes. experience. So Orleans just got like... We love it. You know we love it. We talk about we it We talk so, so much times. about it, y'all. It's just dang fun. If dang I miss anything, fun. Steph, I mean, it's just like, it's, no. it's, it's good for all the reasons. But we like it for co-op. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. I like it for co-op better. It's yeah. a funny thing that I was thinking about that. We love it so much uh, playing Invasion. I was like, I don't really remember how to play the normal game. I know oh, it's not I like remember. very different, but I'm like, what are you trying to do? <laughs> like I asked Nick, I was just like, what do you do with money? He's like, well, it's points. I'm like, no, you have to get $50 to win. Like that's the only <laughs> yeah, thing so that matters. Like invasion. Yeah, you know, I was just like, I have no idea what money's yeah. for otherwise. Because <laughs> Invasion again, is so fun it's to like, play. <laughs> Orleans is, it really is one of the most versatile games out there because the straight base game comp competitive version, great. Yep. There's expansions yeah, like Trade and Intrigue, Intrigue, which are really great. Cool. But then in the Invasion expansion, there's co-op mode. There's a version that's meant for two, two players. players. Yeah. There's Solo. three different solo versions in the Invasion. They're all really fun. It's like yeah. this game, like no matter how you play games, you should probably try it early on because yeah. like it it's just... And then also has they really nice covered. geek up bits to plug the geek store real quick because the geek up bits make this game even better. Because yeah, uh, you're, so you're handling the bits the a lot. Clicky, so clack, you want, yeah, you want oh, the clicks. So nice. <laughs> it's so good. It's like the quack yeah. bits. It's just as so satisfying to have all the, the acrylic in there in the yeah. bag. So nice. So Yeah, but Orleone is it's just it's a highly ranked game. If if, if we're ever doing a list and you know it it's one of the mechanics that Orleone deals with. It's going to be way up there, if not number one, because it's a very good, solid game that provides you a lot. And with all those expansions and stuff, it really, any kind of way you play games, Orleone will probably be a good game to play. Yeah. Uh, and that's why it's everybody's number one. Right. Boom. Uh, but I'm curious, folks out there, did we miss anything? I think we uh, missed, like, I can think games. of at least five, ten that we missed. I mean, Definitely. Uh, I, I, I mean, Crusaders, Crusaders Okie Dokie. <laughs> Rolled West, yeah, not Rolled, Gold West. Gold West. There's a few yeah. things. So if there's uh, any games out there, put them in the comments. There's yeah. so many good ones. I, I also, like them all, I have to say. Yeah, yeah. And also, if you want to see us do any other publishers or maybe a designer... Uh, who has a lot of different games out Maybe there. Fells Let's... after you play them all. I know, right? At this point, like, <laughs> gosh, know. we need to play more Fells so we can do that list. <laughs> yeah, it's honestly fun. on the list. We're constantly trying to be like, okay, what Fells haven't we played yet? Yeah. <laughs> so That'd we got to get those played. Look at the Tasty yeah. Minstrel game catalog. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Tasty Minstrel and Aaliyah. We'll just go with those two. We'll be fine. Oh, yeah. um, and so, but nonetheless, what publishers, what designers, what game mechanics would you like to see us do a top 10 versus 10 list on? Uh, we're really open to everything. Be creative. We've done one on an artist before. Yeah. Now we've done publish. So we really want to make it as, as broad as humanly possible. Yeah. So yeah, so let us know down in the comments below what you would like to see from the three amigos. Yeah, we'll compare our taste to the taste of the people. And of course, if you want to help influence these lists of the future, go on to Board Game Geek. Yeah. If you don't have a profile, create one. It's free. And then rank your games. You can put in wish lists for games you want to get, uh, games you own. Stuff. Uh, you can ask uh, questions if you have any questions in forums. There's a ton to do on Board Game Geek. So go ahead and uh, get signed up today if you're not already and uh make sure you rank those games and participate in the community because that's what bgg is built off is the community yeah, of people. people talking uh and you can influence what games appear in what list by how people you rank them people uh so anyway folks that's gonna be it for us the three amigos thanks so much for joining us for another list if you want to get any of those geek up bits visit the geek up store today to upgrade uh, all of your games Indeed. and uh until next time i'm mike i'm nick and that's Steph. and we out of here bye bye, bye. bye. bye.